Leipzig was one of the spark plugs for this peaceful revolution. They had begun uh, what they called Friedensgebete, the prayers for peace in Leipzig, seven years earlier. So every Monday afternoon at five o'clock, they would gather at the Nikolai Kirche and pray, and pray for peaceful change in their country. But people were free to speak their mind, too. The church had a little bit of freedom in Germany in that you couldn't be arrested for what you said there. But the Friedensgebete, people would get up and for the first time say how afraid they were, how terrified they were that they were being followed by the Stasi. They were tired of having their children come down with lung disease because the air was so filthy. But these Friedensgebete, the prayers for peace, are happening every Monday, all those years in between. Sometimes there'd be five people there, sometimes 10, sometimes 20. Well, in the year of 89, all of a sudden it's 100, it's 200, it's 500, it's 1,000. All kinds of people, not necessarily Christians, but simply people who regarded that as a, a, a sanctuary, a free place where you could go and be heard. And the communist leaders in East Germany are beginning to be worried about this. So Leipzig was such a spark plug, in fact, that in October of that year, there was the 40, 40 year celebration of the German Republic. And they cracked heads um, in order to prepare for Mikhail Gorbachev's visit there. They brought out the truncheons, they were beating people, they hauled hundreds of people off to prison. It was a really ugly confrontation. Two days later, the Friedensgebete are scheduled to take place in Leipzig. They ran an article in the paper in Leipzig, threatening, saying, these insurrections will be put down and we will stop this, if necessary, using a gun. Nikolai Kirche had been run all of these years by Christian Führer, was the, the pastor there. A wonderful name, appropriate name, Christian Leader. That, that is the translation of his name. So Christian Führer, all those years of the Friedensgebete, is fostering this dialogue of peaceful change. But he's emphasizing that the way Christ would have us behave is not violently. The 9th of October, they're scheduled to have the Friedensgebete. They also anticipated that it would get ugly. They had flown in hundreds of units of blood to the hospitals to treat the expected shooting victims. They had told parents to pick up their children from the schools that were in the downtown area. They had warned people to stay off the streets and they had brought in military from other provinces. They brought in tanks, water cannons. People are calling Christian Führer saying, you can't have this, it's gonna be civil war in, in our city and in our country and you'll be the one responsible. And he said, we're called to live our faith and to do so responsibly, but we will not be intimidated into stopping. So as the afternoon wears on, tick, 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 his church is already full, and many of the seats have been taken there by communist functionaries to keep the real people from coming in who wanted to be there. Nevertheless, clock keeps going, panic is rising, 70,000 people are walking through the streets of Leipzig. 70,000 people, ashen-faced, mostly quiet, fearing, and justifiably so, that there could be real violence that evening. The husband and wife are having a conversation at home. Should we both go? What happens if we're both killed? Who's then there for the children? Which of us goes? The young recruits, the soldiers who were there with a gun in the hand that they really didn't want to have are being told, you will shoot when ordered, regardless of who's in that crowd, regardless if you have a wife or a mother or a daughter, you will obey orders. And if you do not, you will be shot from behind. Well, they're going back to their barracks and throwing themselves on the bed and weeping. They're caught in a position that nobody wants to be in. So you have these soldiers here nervously holding their guns, all the people inside this church nervously there to pray. The service begins at five o'clock and they open with the Beatitudes, blessed are the peacemakers. They prayed, the pastor there said, Martyrdom is not a call for everyone, and for those of you who want to stay here and pray, you are welcome to do so for the evening, and for those of you who want to go onto the street, take the arm of your neighbor, carry a candle, and go and pray peacefully 
as you go onto the streets. As they're getting ready to leave the church, they prayed a benediction, a blessing. Christian Fuller says that it was a palpable presence of the Holy Spirit coming down. They grab each other's arms, they walked out the door, they looked at the soldiers standing there holding a gun, hoping to God they wouldn't have to shoot it. And instead of cursing them or saying anything rude, they smiled at them, they prayed for them, they sang. And this group from the church goes between the walls of soldiers, they're on both sides of them, and begins to walk around. There's a ring around the city of Leipzig. They walk the circle the entire evening for the next three hours, taking stones out of the hands of people who wanted to throw them, and there were people, some of them probably instigators from the communists themselves, took the stones out of their hands, took the people over to the edge of the thing and turned them over to the police. This entire group of people walked peacefully that entire evening. Three hours later, the forces of peace had won. A few days later, the East German leader is deposed and he is replaced um, with a man named Egon Krenz. And there began to be demonstrations like this in East German cities everywhere. So Leipzig was the first and pretty soon it's everywhere. Four weeks later, it happens in Berlin, only this time it's a million people on their feet. Most of the city, it's amazing. And as they got to the place where it looked like the group could do a breakaway and bolt for, for the Brandenburg Gate, which, is, which would be a reason to have the instigate shooting, they didn't. The entire group, silently, disciplined, with faith, walked to the streets of Berlin. The 9th of November, the people in Leipzig are going through the city again. And they were walking through the streets of Leipzig, this time asking forgiveness for what the Germans did to the Jews in World War II. And as the people of Leipzig marched through their city for the seventh time, the Berlin Wall fell that night. <laughs>